miss that easy exchange of seasons past. And I miss the times when I think about them, when I used to play catch with my dad, golden summer evenings with the dew wet on the grass and the cicadas singing in the elm trees. I say all of this to make a simple and serious point that this exchange of fathers playing catch with sons gives us at least a little glimpse of what the scripture means when it says, the father himself loves you. Yes, the father himself loves you. He loves you the way that a, a father loves to play catch with his son. God, as it were, leans back and fires you his grace, especially through Christ. You reach out to catch it by faith, maybe fumbling at times, but, but trying to catch it and eventually ending up with the ball. And when you take his grace firmly in hand, you throw back worship and praise and honor to your father in heaven. And as this exchange goes back and forth, it brings joy to the children of God. I thought you quit.
Folks, we apologize for interrupting your programming, but we are on the scene of breaking news right now on Logan Road. A one mile stretch of that road has been shut down between mile markers 16 and 17 due to a one car accident this evening. Details extremely sketchy at this point. We're on the scene along with police and first responders. They have urged us to stay away from the scene so that they can reconstruct exactly what has happened here tonight. Here's what we do know. Earlier this evening, a minivan apparently veered off the side of the road, struck a tree. There were four people in that van. The van was driven by Rick Torino. He was traveling with his wife, son, and infant daughter. Now, two people have died in this accident. Two others have been transported to Deaconess Hospital. We don't know the extent of the injuries right now. Again, a very tragic and horrific accident and uh, Logan Road near mile marker 16 and 17. You are urged to stay away from that area so that police can do their jobs. First responders can figure out exactly what have ha what has happened here this evening. Uh, really, the scene is still being pieced together. We got here a short while ago, and we will bring you more information as it becomes available. Reporting from the scene of a one-car accident on Logan Road, Doug Kuffner, WCHP News, will now join our regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Rachel? Oh, hey Gary. What's up? What? what? When? Where are they now? Uh, yeah, as soon as Rachel gets home, we'll, uh, we'll be right there. Yeah, she's working late again. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks for calling. All right, bye. Oh, man. Ray. Ray? Raymond? You need to get home right now, son. Yeah, something happened. Yeah, just listen, just tell Mr. Barrett to bring you home right now. Hey, you haven't talked to your mom, have you? But never mind, never mind. Just just get home. I'll tell you when you get home. Okay, now go. Bye. Luke, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm sorry, I just... Why them? Why'd it have to be them, Ray? My mom, she was great. She's always doing stuff for people. Remember she used to make us cookies every time, every time in the summer when we play together. And she's always doing stuff for people. Always had a smile on her face. Always in church. She never heard a fly, man. This ain't fair. I fought with her all weekend the day before that happened. I just didn't want to spend the weekend at my stupid great aunt's house. I yelled at her. I told her I hated her, Ray. Why did I have to say that? Why did she have to go... Before I could tell her I loved her one more time. It's not fair. My sister, she was so young, she never got to see anything. Why not me instead of her? It's not fair. My old man, he's been worthless. Look at him. Don't say that, Luke. Your mom would have wanted you and your dad to turn to each other right now. I can't turn to him, Ray. I mean, look at him. It's been worthless ever since it happened. He probably wishes it had been me too. All he wants to do is get stupid drunk and pass out on the couch. Why couldn't it have been him that died, not my mom? My mom would have just hugged and cried with me. 
My dad hates me. And I hate him. I hate him. Well, it looks like almost everybody's gone. Hey, uh, Rick, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'm just really, really sorry. Yeah, thanks, Mike. It was a beautiful service. I, I'm sure Wendy would have loved it. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> so look, uh, I was meaning to call you uh, before. I just wanted to say I'm sorry about uh, Rachel leaving and everything. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I should have seen it coming. I mean, she was working later and later every night. Well, yeah, but still, I, you know, just to take off like that all of a sudden. Just... Yeah, well, never mind that, Rick. Is there anything that I or, you know, we can do for you? No, no, there's nothing anybody can do. Well, what about Lucas? I mean, Ray said he hasn't seen him in school all week. I don't know. He just hadn't felt like going, I guess, and I'm not going to try and make him go at this point. It's just, uh, it's been tough on both of us, you know. I bet. Uh, what about you? How are you holding up? All right, I guess. I just really can't get used to the thought of her not being there, you know. It's, uh, it's been difficult. Well, if there's anything that we can do for you, don't hesitate to ask. I mean, that's what friends are for. Yeah, I know. I appreciate it, Mike. Well, I gotta get going. I'll uh, see you later, huh? Okay. Well, we'll be praying for you guys. What? What was that you said you'll be praying for us? Is that what you said? Let me ask you, Mike. You actually still believe that there's a God out there? Somebody uh, looking out for us all the time? You actually believe that now? There's a higher power controlling things and uh, watching over us? What kind of a God, Mike, is going to take a man's wife from him when he needs her the most? What kind of all-loving God is going to take a baby girl away from her daddy before she even has a chance to grow up and live her life? think uh, God has any control over all this? Uh, or maybe you think he caused the accident. You, you know, uh, why wasn't he helping me out when I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer on the road? You know, why, why didn't he protect my family that night? Just save your breath, Mike. Don't bother praying because there's no one up there listening. On this earth, it's just you and me and Lucas and Ray, and up there, there's just a whole lot of nothing. You know, in fact, if there is a God, I think all this proves is that he hated me, Mike. There's no love up there. It's just the sun and the moon and the stars, and down here it's just pain and misery. It's just nothing, which is, uh, by the way, what I've been left with here, nothing. Man, just look at your own life, all right? The same night that half my family dies, your wife up and leaves you in the middle of the night with no explanation because she found somebody better. Huh? You think God's looking out for you? Don't be stupid. Don't be a chump, man. There's nothing to look forward to in the next life, except, of course, that we won't have to go through this hell we call a life anymore. You know, look, I just put my wife of 18 years and my baby girl in the ground. I had to watch them get lowered into a hole in the dirt. And you're sitting here telling me that uh, God's just suddenly, poof, going to make everything better? No, you're not going to make it better with your God and your prayers and your hooba Jew, nothing. Not even uh, this is the bottle in my jacket's going to make anything better. Because <sighs> there's nobody up there listening, Mike. Just, just, just save your breath. Don't even bother praying for me. If you're going to pray for anything, pray that you take a step into reality. Because there's no God listening to you or me or anybody. There's nothing up there. Nothing. You're wrong, Rick. You know you're wrong.
Come on, Ray, get moving. You're gonna be late. Right here, Dad. You don't have to yell. I'm sorry. I just don't want you to be late for your first day as a senior in high school. It's just gonna be like any other year. No, not this year. This year, you guys are gonna win it all. I mean, you're being voted the best basketball team in the state. And it was even on the news this morning. Yeah, don't go getting your hopes up again, Dad. Yeah, but I just know it. My boy, captain of the varsity basketball team. My boy. Okay, Pop. I, Let me go. I, I'm sorry, Ray. I, I don't mean to get sappy on you, Ray, but I'm really proud of the man that you're turning into. And you know, your mom would be proud. Thanks, Dad. So, have you talked to Lucas lately? Is he going to get back into the basketball game this year? Uh, I don't think so. I haven't seen him much this summer. He, he never even did come out to practice. Well, you did work a lot. I mean, you did that thing at church. Maybe you just missed him. No, I don't think that's what it is. He's spending a lot of time with a lot of other friends. Well, I mean, that's okay. I, I mean, you have other friends, too. Yeah, but not like this. These guys are tough, and they like to get in some trouble. Well, this year, he might need you the most. I mean, you know what it is in three weeks, right? I can't believe it's already been almost three years. Yeah, for all of us. You ever miss her? Your mom? Yeah, yeah, sure I do. I mean, we have a lot of great memories together. I mean, I don't know where she is. I just wish I had the answers. Well, and you always tell me too. When God wants you to have the answers, you will. Yeah, but... I just hope I don't screw you up too bad before I get no. it. No. You're doing a great job. Mom couldn't have done any better. Well, what about you, Ray? I mean, do you think about her? I mean, sometimes, I guess. I mean, it's kind of frustrating because, I, you know, every day that goes by, I think I'm just forgetting what she looks like. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Ray, but I just couldn't have all those pictures staring back at me after she left. No, it's not your fault. I don't blame you for taking the pictures down. That had to be tough. Why are we still having a hard time letting go? I mean, it's been three years. Well, you're never really going to be completely letting her go, Ray. I mean, she is your mom, and she always will be. Look, I don't understand why she did what she did. But I mean, despite all that, uh, to be honest with you, there's a part of me that still loves her and probably always will. I mean, she gave me you. She gave me the best thing a person could give somebody. And for that, I'll be forever indebted to her. Well, I mean, do you ever think about getting married again? I mean, what about Christine from church? Oh, Ray. I've been seeing her for a while now. Ray, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, well, you're still a man, aren't you? Wait, excuse me, Ray. Wait, wait a minute. Now, even though we're having kind of a heart-to-heart, -heart, there's some things that we don't need to discuss and some things that are none of your business. So, you need to get going and get to school before you're late. Well, fine. I'll see you tonight. All right. Bye. I love you. Love you too, Bob. I just want to know why, Rachel. God, when you're ready to give me those answers, It's me, Raymond. Luke here? Uh, hey, Ray. How you doing, boy? I was looking for Luke. I was gonna give him a ride to school. 
Uh, he ain't back there? I, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't seen him. I'm sure he's already left. I don't got no idea, boy. I, I don't see too much of him these days. Uh, he's probably already left. I, I need to get going. Hey, how's your old man doing? He's okay. He's been really busy with work. Yeah, work. A working man. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it takes a whole lot of work to maintain a palace like this. <laughs> yeah, well, I need to get going, you know. First day of school and all. Yeah. Hey, tell your old man hi, and sorry I missed him at the country club. <laughs> hey, I tell that boy of mine to get his butt home right after school. He's got a lot of work to do around here. Yes, sir. Have this 57 Chevy had part of it painted white, blue, looked like a brand new car. Man, it was sweet. Hey, Luke, right. came by your house to give you a ride this morning. Guess you'd already left. Yeah, so how was your summer? Oh, uh, you know, it was all right, just kind of hung out and did stuff. Well, I mean, we should have gotten together sometime, and yeah, yeah, uh, we should have got together. I was real busy. Look, uh, you ought to get going. You don't want to be late. Right, well, uh, I'll see you. I'll give you a call sometime. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> Who was that? This guy I used to hang out with. You used to hang out with him? Yeah, years ago, man. I've seen that guy before. Isn't he one of those Bible bangers? Yeah, he, he used to not be like that. He actually used to be kind of cool. That guy cool? No, I don't buy it. That guy's never been cool. I can't stand those guys. Always preaching, I am holier than thou art. I gets old. I think he's even a counselor at his church or something. <laughs> Man, this guy just keeps getting better. Yeah, it's not so bad, I guess. Well, I'm just glad you didn't end up that way. Yeah, me too. Christine. Hi, Ray. It's nice to see you again. Uh, so I wasn't expecting to see you here. <laughs> well, I ran into her at the grocery store and we started chatting, so I invited her over for dinner. It, that's okay. That's okay with me. I gotta warn you about this guy's cooking. Hey, hey. None of that. <laughs> I'm a little concerned now. Well, maybe you'd like to go to the kitchen and cook. I didn't say that, though. <laughs> well, it's okay. I got a roast in the oven and I, I think we'll be all right. So how was practice? I mean, it was okay. My legs are a little sore, though. Well, you need to get them back into shape. Yeah. Not only that, I need to be faster down the lines. You know, you had that problem last season. Honey, he's got the fastest legs on the court. I mean, nobody could catch up to him. I don't really know anything about basketball, but couldn't you find, like, some really fast guy and put a pair of shorts on him and let him go? <laughs> You really need to know the game, and you know you need to know how to shoot the ball, and, and so forth. I mean, there's a little bit more to it. <laughs> there's no one out there that's fast that can throw the ball up the hoop? Well, there is one guy, but I don't think we're going to see much of him this year. Again? Didn't you try to talk to him about it? I mean, not really. He's just not being really too receptive over anything right now. See, Christine, Ray's friend Lucas is one of the fastest kids on the team. And they played junior high basketball together a long time ago. I mean, and they're great together. They broke every record in the book. And what, he just doesn't want to play anymore? Well, I don't know. He's just not the same kid he was. I mean, he's just a little different now. He was that kid that I was telling you about where his mom and his sister oh. died a few years ago? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he just really just hasn't been the same. You know, he's just been different. But I'll tell you what, look guys, I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm gonna go freshen up, get in the shower. 
cleaned up. Oh. Uh, all right. Uh, you sure you don't want to stay for dinner? Nah. I'll probably just probably pick up something with Gary and Alan later. Okay. Well, have fun. And be careful. And be home by 11.30. It was nice to see you again, Christine. You too, Ray. You have a good night. And be careful. Anyway, that's my boy. What's for dessert, though? <laughs> I think I've got some apple pie in the... Did you really make apple pie? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Love that. Yeah. I'll clean up. Great, great. That's... I, I still can't believe that I got stuff on my shirt. Had to change. That's because you didn't have <laughs> Hey, you know what? Since you're doing the dishes, I'll make the coffee. Sounds good. All right. Good work, buddy. Okay. Lucas, I think we need to call your dad and get you to the hospital. No, Mr. Campbell, I'm all right. Just please don't call my dad. You gotta tell us what happened to you, Lucas. Nothing really. It's just kind of a game. These guys I know, they're goofing around. Maybe it went a little too far. A little too far? Michael, look, look, calm down. Lucas, I mean, look what they did to you. They beat you half to death. Mr. Campbell, really? Oh, okay. I'm still going to call your father and let him know that you're all right. All right, all right. I promise I'll call him here in a little bit. Not that he would care, though. He probably won't answer anyways. Probably passed out. You really need to think about reporting these kids. What they did to you, it's not a game. They could have killed you. It's not like that. We were just goofing around, honest. I actually got a few good shots in as well. Lucas, you think this is a joke? I mean, you think this is funny? I mean, you call these guys friends? I mean, really, seriously, next time they're gonna, they're gonna kill you. Look, I really appreciate you helping me out, but I need to get going. Tell Ray I said hi and sorry about the other day. Lucas, please, Ray will be home soon. Can you at least stay until he gets back? No, thanks. I need to be going. You're probably right. My dad's probably worried about me. Well, be careful. I mean, and stay away from those guys. I mean, they're nothing but trouble. Why? I mean, why would you hang out with guys like that? I mean, what kind of friends would do that to you? I don't know, Michael. Well, I've got to do something about it. Yeah, but he said it was no big deal. Maybe you need to just let it go. I can't let it go, Christine. I mean, he's been like my son for years, and listen, I don't know what's going on with his dad, but I've got to do something to help. Yeah, but you don't know all the details yet. Detail? What details? I mean, a group of guys find a younger guy and they take advantage of him, and then he ends up getting hurt? I'm not going to sit around and let that happen. Something worse might happen. You know what you need to do? You need to wait until Ray gets home and you need to talk to him about it. You know, you're right. And then I can find out who Lucas is hanging out with. <sighs> Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about all this. Morning, Ray. How was the movie last night? It was okay. Last night you get to do anything before the games start, huh? Yeah, but I like it better during the season this way. Oh, you guys are going to have a good year. Hey, listen, uh, I need to talk to you about something. Is everything okay? No, not really. Uh, 
Lucas came by last night. He did? Yeah. Who's he been hanging out with lately? Dwayne, Benny, a couple other guys. Why? Uh, Lucas was hurt. I mean, he was hurt really bad. Apparently he was hanging out with some friends and they got a little carried away and it messed him up, Ray. I mean, really bad. He wouldn't let me take him to the hospital. I mean, he wouldn't even let me call his dad. Well, his dad's pretty screwed up right now, and he'd probably come down on him pretty hard for it. Well, I mean, you should have seen him, Ray. He looked really scared. I mean, we need to do something about it before he gets hurt. Well, what do you want me to do? I think we should turn them into the police. I mean, what are these guys like? They're tough guys, you know, skip class, you know, that sort of stuff. Look, after we turn them in, I think you should convince Lucas to talk to the police and tell him what happened. Uh, he's going to need you as a friend right now. I'll do whatever I need to do. Dad, I know I told you I'd talk to Lucas, but don't you think it's time to go talk to Lucas' dad? You know, I think you're right. I mean, they I think they're going to need us right now. I think they're going to need God's help as well. I think you just need to keep them in your prayers and we'll figure it out. Hey, let's get dressed. We've got some yard work to do. Okay? I swear to God, guys, I didn't tell him you guys did anything. The moment he got hauled into jail last night, one of my dad kicked snot out of me when he got us home. I don't know. Seriously, I don't know. Who did this to you? Why did the cops think it was us? What did you tell them? I don't know, man. I seriously don't know. Then if it wasn't you, then who was it? Ray? I don't know. It had, it had to have been Ray. Why would that little sissy rat us out? I don't know. Jealousy? He was mad because I was hanging out with you guys, not him. Maybe he saw this way to get you guys out of the picture. That little punk, yeah, that makes sense. He's, he's gonna pay for this. He's gonna pay, that's for sure. Look, guys, let's just forget about it. It's no big deal. Let's just, just forget it. My dad did a real number on me last night, too. I ain't gonna let that little wimp get away with it. Hey, Rick. Hey. Hey. Mikey, how's it going, everybody? Oh, it's, it's all right. How are you? Uh, hey, you're looking at it. You want something? You want me to get you a beer? No, I'm good, man. Thanks. Sure? Yeah. Tasty? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good, Rick. Thank you. Uh, so what brings you down to uh, my little shack in the woods? Uh, well, Rick, I just wanted to come by and see how things were going for you. Hey, you know me, man, living the dream, living life to the fullest. Matter of fact, I just found last week a pair of socks that matched. <laughs> oh, man, look around you. Look at this place. Uh, it's uh, Things haven't been going too well. Rick, I didn't mean anything by it. I mean, I, I just I just wanted to come by and check on you. Oh, you wanted to check in with me? Why, yeah. uh, why now, of all times? Because it's been uh, three years next week, is that why? Think I didn't remember? Is that it? I may be a drunk, but I'm not stupid, Mike. You're not stupid, man. I know that. I'm just saying it's it's been a while since we've talked. You know, our kids they haven't talked either. Yeah, well, I've been busy, and as for the kid, I I don't even know what's going on with him anymore. He's uh he's just a loser, and uh, you know, I don't even keep track of him. I don't know what he's doing these days. Well, why don't you ask him? What? Why don't you ask him what's going on in his life? I mean, the boy needs you. I mean. You're just, you're just sitting around here boozing it up? I mean, you're sitting here calling him a loser? Excuse me, you trying to tell me how to be a father now? No, Rick, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying maybe he's reaching out to you. I mean, for God's sake, he lost his mom and his sister. Maybe he lost his father. Maybe I died in that accident too, Mike. You ever think about that? Look, how can you sit here all high and mighty and uh, talk about uh, you know my life 
after my wife and my daughter died. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, your wife left you, and that's I'm real sorry about that, but she wasn't just ripped out of your life. Mine was. Oh my god, Rick. You know what, who do you think you are? I haven't turned my back on Lucas. I haven't blamed him for anything. I've never once held him responsible for the accident. I mean, haven't you really? I mean, you've deserted him. I mean, look at yourself. You're sitting around here, you're boozing it up all day long. I mean, God, Rick. I mean, come on. The kid's lost. You're lost. I mean, you really need to find him. You need to find yourself. I mean, jeez, man. Let go of the bruise. Stop drinking. Find him. Grab him. Give him a hug. Let him know how much you love him. I mean, he needs you now more than ever. Would you feel like you gave him everything if he died today? I mean, come on. How? How, Mike? What, what do I do? What am I supposed to do? Listen, man, you just do it. I mean, you just you just tell yourself that you're going to do it. I mean, listen, I'm here to help you. I'm your friend. And listen, I, there's a lot of other people that want to help, too. Rick, I want you to come to church with me. Uh, look, this church garbage again, all right? Wendy uh, was on an endless loop of that all day, every day with the church stuff. And uh, she would never shut up about it. And look where it got her. Look, man, it, it, it worked for her. I mean, look where she's at. She's in heaven, Rick. No, Michael. She is not in heaven. She is in a box under six feet of dirt. All right, that's where your God put her. No, that's where the accident put her, Rick. God put her next to him. Her faith put her next to God. Listen, man, I know this is a lot to take in, but, I mean, humor me. Humor me, buddy. I mean, you got to ask yourself a couple questions. I mean, seriously. I mean, look at your life, man. Look where you're at. I mean, look at the way things have gone. Do you think Wendy would have wanted you and Lucas to have that? Is, is this the life that she would have wanted you to live? I mean, answer those questions. But then ask yourself one more. Would it be too much for you to, to believe that there's a higher power out there that can help you? I mean, really? I mean, there is someone that is really looking out for you, Rick. <laughs> you know what? Why should I believe, Michael? I mean, you take a look around. What do you see here? <sighs> Failure. That's what I see. Uh, lost uh, every job I've ever had and uh, lost all my friends. And uh, <laughs> failed as a father. And... Uh, that's, uh, that's all I am, is one big failure. Uh, my son is a mess, and it's all my fault. But listen, Rick, it's not too late to do something about it. I mean, listen, you've opened your eyes today. I mean, now you can, you can see what's going on in your life. I mean, you can see you've been blaming God all this time for the things. And, and you, I think you're starting to realize that it's not his fault, and it's not yours either. But it is your responsibility to do something about it. I mean, listen, man, when Rachel left me... I thought it was the end of the world. Rick, I thought the church thing was stupid too, until she left me. I mean, listen, man. I, I looked at my world that she had left for me, and it was way too much to handle. And I didn't know what to do. But you know what? Those people in that church, they helped me. God helped me. God slowly helped me rebuild my life to be a stronger man. And I will always be grateful for that. I mean, and everybody that I laughed at, and close my door on all those years, they were the first ones there to help me. And they could help you too, just like I'm here today to help you. I mean, you need it, man. You really need church. You really need God in your life. I, I don't know what to do anymore, man. Uh, I just feel so empty inside and uh, feel like I'm dying. Uh, booze used to help, but it doesn't anymore. I, I want you to help. I want your help, Mike. Please help me. Listen, man, you can lose that feeling right now. I mean, you can get rid of that feeling. I mean, seriously, here and now, Rick, all you have to do is just ask God for help. Just, just ask for acceptance of Jesus right now. Ask Him to be in your life. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Father... We thank you for welcoming Rick into your family. Protect him and give him strength. Jesus, continue to show yourself to him and through him as your servant. Give him the strength to fight the devil away when he approaches. Continue to give him peace through his troubled times. And clear his heart and his mind of these troubles so he can see you more clearly. And I know that is done now. In the name of Jesus.
All right, ladies, line it up. All right, give me 10 laps, hit the showers. Ray, hang with me for a second. Yeah, coach. Now I know I don't have to tell you how important this season is this year. We were this close to the state championship last year. I could almost taste it. Yeah, we had a pretty good year. Good, good? It was a great year last year. No one even expected us to make it out of the district playoffs. But you know what? It's because of you we made it as far as we did last year. I don't know. I think we had a pretty good team, too. Uh, we did have a good team. But you know what? It's because of you we made it as far as we did. These guys will follow you anywhere you want to take them. You want to lead them to state? These guys are with you all the way. Now, you're a natural born leader, son. That's why I got to ask you a question. Now, Garrett Benjamin, he was our all district forward last year, but he graduated. Now these young guys, they can fill their shoes sometime down the line, but this year, we need something that's gonna send us over the top. Now your friend, um, the real quick kid, what's his name? Uh, Lucas? Yeah, that's it. He was a heck of a forward in the city league a couple years ago, wasn't he? Best in the city. He'd have played JV with me too, but he broke his leg. I remember that, I remember that. You know what, if we could get him out here, that may be just what we need. I don't know. I've been trying to get him out here and stuff, but you know, we're just really not the best of friends anymore, so. Yep. Well, let me tell you a little something about friendship. Real friends are never gone. Thing is, it may just be you pushing a little bit farther just to pull them back into the fold this year. You know, basketball, this team, may really be able to turn them around. I mean, look at you, kid. You know? What do you say? Give another shot? Ask him again? Yeah, I mean, I'll try again. All right, that a boy. Hit the showers. scared me. What are you doing here? thought we could walk home together, man. My car's in the shop. I don't think that's such a good idea. Come on, Luke. Just like for old times' sake, let's just walk for a while. Alright. Uh, I gotta see Mr. Afton real quick. Um, meet me out back by the field and we'll go from there. Alright, cool. friends the other day. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about it, man. Yeah, sure. No problem. Hey, coach said something about you coming out and playing again. You know, I know our first game is on Friday, but I think you could be ready by next week. Think about it. Torino and Campbell out there on the court again. Be one for the record books, man. Nah, basketball ain't my game anymore, Ray. Oh, come on, Luke. You used to love playing. And this time we get to do it in front of thousands of people. May even give you something to do. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I get it. You mean something to get me away from my friends. Luke, you can hang out with whoever you want. I was just hoping that we could be friends again. Kind of like we used to be. Like we used to be. You keep saying stuff like that. We ain't those same kids anymore, Ray. Things are different. Those times are long gone. Long gone. You went on to become this smart jock that the whole town loves because you're going to take us to state. That ain't me, man. I'm a loser. I got nothing going for me. My grades are terrible. I drink. I smoke. I am my dad, man. I turned out to be everything he was. You don't have to be. You think basketball's my future? You think I have a future? Yeah, you could if you tried. It isn't about basketball, Luke. It's about you and me and the kind of friends that we used to be. Yeah, we're a little older and a little different, but not as much as you think we are. You don't know anything about me, Ray. Look, because of the friends is what we used to be, I gotta tell you something. What? Just, just be careful out there, man. Like on the court? Yeah, just in general. Just 
be careful. So how many kids do you have? Yeah, I have one, and his name's Ray. Yeah. And he's a good yeah. kid. Yeah. He plays a lot of basketball. Good. Yeah. Oh, good, good. You're finally home. Hello. Yeah, sorry I'm late. I kind of got hung up talking to Lucas. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Hey, listen, I want you to meet Mr. Gary Morse. He's with the athletic department at Boston College. He's here to talk to you. Hey, it's great to finally get to meet you, Ray. It's can, nice to meet you. Can we sit down for a yeah, minute? Yeah, sure. Great. Uh, um, Ray, there's, there's something that I have to say to you. Uh, we've been looking at you, well, since last year. And by the way, that was a terrific season that you had. Well, uh, I'm, thank you, sir. But, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, what's all this about? Well, all, all of us at Boston College uh, feel like you could have a very bright future with us. Yeah, Mr. Morris thinks that he can get you a full basketball scholarship at BC. That's right, Ray, and, and I can tell you this much. If you come to Boston College, you, you're going to play. You know, I, I can't guarantee anything. Okay, here, here's the fact. We, we're losing three starters to graduation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with your grades and your God-given ability, I mean, I, I can't help but feel that you would be walking into a perfect situation with us. I don't know, Mr. Morris. I mean, Boston, I mean, it's an awful long way away. And I don't know if I can be that far away from my dad. Ah, don't be ridiculous, Ray. This is a great opportunity for you. I mean, you could be starting in a national program. And, and, and it's not only that, but Boston College is one of the top academic institutions in the country. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you would be expected to uh, keep up on your studies and hopefully eventually graduate. And, and your dad tells me that you're interested in medicine. Okay, Boston College is one of the top medical programs in, in the country. I'm, Ray, I think this is a perfect fit. Yeah. Really, Mr. Morris, uh, this is an amazing opportunity, and I'm and I definitely will give it some serious thought. But please understand, I, I just can't give you an answer right now. I'm gonna have to discuss it with my dad. Hey, that's absolutely not a problem. I, I got to get going anyway. I will see you at your game on Friday. Hey, please uh, give this some thought. I mean, I just feel like this is a special situation for all of us. Well, we definitely will, Mr. Morris, and thank you for coming by. And we will see you on Friday. Thank you. Hey, it's my pleasure, Ray. So what do you think, man? Boston College. Man, my boy. Now starting point guard for the Boston Eagles, Ray Campbell. <sighs> Knock it off, Dad. That's a long way away from here. Oh, come on, Ray. I mean... You don't get an opportunity like this. I mean, and to be honest with you, I, I can't afford to put you in a college like this. I mean, it's time for you to get out and do something with your life. I mean, don't be stuck here like me. Dad, it's, it's just been the two of us since Mom left, and I don't want to leave you too. I appreciate that. I really do. But it's time for you to live your life. I mean, listen, when your mom left, I held you close to me because you were all that I had. And I'm just proud of watching you become the man that you are. And, I mean, it's, it's time for you to do things on your own. Don't be scared to do things. And, and listen, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll be fine, okay? I mean, listen, Ray. You deserve this. You did this for yourself. Now, you need to get out and take it. Well, you know what? Let's just get through South first, and then we can talk about my future. Agreed. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. How about some dinner? Take out. The final score, East Ridge 72, South High School 54, and Ray Clutch Campbell, another stellar performance this evening. The big guy at 36 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists. This guy is the real deal. That's going to do it for our game of the week. Reporting for WCHB, I'm Doug Kuffner signing off.
remember Mr. Morris from Boston College, right? Hey, Mr. Morris, how you doing? Oh my God, he was here for the whole game. He saw everything you did. Hey, that was a great game, Ray. I mean, you really showed me what you're capable of doing tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't just me. I mean, my team did really well. You know, my defense was outstanding tonight, hey. so. Hey, it, it, it's not the time for modesty, Ray. It's the time for honesty. Um, I mean, you were amazing. And um, I've got a confession to make. I've, I've taken the opportunity to look over your grades and records. And if you're willing to sign a letter of intent, then Boston College is willing to offer you a full scholarship. How's that sound? Full scholarship? Really? Really, Ray. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you're going to fit in great up there. I mean, you've got the brains and you've got the talent on the court. Um, I, I think it's going to work out great. Um, and by the way, I'm still waiting for the answer. So what do you say? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. I won't let you down. I, I know we won't, Ray, and we're all excited that you'll be coming up to Boston to help us win a few basketball games. This is great. I'll tell you what, let me take everybody out for a big steak dinner. My treat. Gary, you in? Hey, I will never turn down an invitation like that. I'm in. Of course. We on a Tony's? Absolutely. All right, well, I need to go get changed up and cleaned up, and I'll meet you guys there. Okay, well, hey, hurry up, kid, because uh, we've got a lot of celebrating to do tonight. Plus, I know you want to get done so you can go hang out with your friends. Hey. And I'm going to call Christine and have her meet us there, okay? Read my mind. Right. Hey, I'll see you over there. All right, later, guys. So, Campbell, what was that all about? What's that all about, man? Oh, come on, Ray. Who are you and your dad talking to out there? Man, it's just some guy my dad knows. Come on, Campbell. We all know what's going on. Is that the guy from Boston College? What guy? Knock it off, Ray, is it? Yeah. And? What did he say? I got it. You got it? I got it, man. Full ride scholarship, the whole enchilada. Are you kidding me? Nah, man, I'm going out to dinner with my dad tonight to sign a letter of intent. Oh, man, that's awesome. Congrats, buddy. Campbell. Somebody's out there looking for you. Is there another reporter? No. Probably another talent scout for your royal highness. So yeah, there was no one out there. Well, it was just there, and us taking off. Did you know who it was? No, it was some weird looking kid, white as a ghost. It must have been one of those golf kids. Like your daddy to go to the cops with you. You should have known better. You should have known better than mess with us. How are you gonna know what it's like to get the crap kicked out of here for no good reason? <laughs> Give me the pipe. Give me the pipe! I got my tail kicked by my dad when I got thrown in jail! <laughs> now it's your turn! <laughs> Wayne, what did you I didn't mean to. You saw him, he moved. Let's get out of here. Somebody help me! Please, please! How can I help you? Oh, yes, I'm looking for my son. He was just brought in in an ambulance a little bit ago. His name's Ray Campbell. Okay, yes, Mr. Campbell. He was taken straight up to surgery. Okay, is, is he alright? I mean, what's going on? What, what happened? Well, let me go try to find out and see if I can get some more information for us. Okay, yes, thank you. Find my son, please.
Yes, he is still in surgery. They don't know how much longer he'll be in surgery. The doctor will come down as soon as possible to give you some more information. Try and have a seat, try to relax, and as soon as we know something, they'll let you know. I just want to know what's going on. I just want to know what happened. I know, and I'm sure we're going to find out real soon what's going on. I'm sure of it. But Christine, I can't lose him. Not him, too. I mean, he's all I've got. I don't want to lose him. You're not going to lose anything, Michael. He's going to get through this, whatever it is. Mr. Campbell? Yes, Doctor. How is he? Mr. Campbell, I'm Dr. Gately. Um, I was attending uh, when I saw your son in the ER. Um, you know, he sustained a, a lot of bleeding, and we had to control him and stabilize him. He went, he went to the surgery right away. You know, he, he was unconscious when he came to our ER. I mean, I mean do you know what happened? I mean, what, what's going on? Well, we don't know quite yet. Um, as far as we know, there may have been an assault. He sustained multiple fractures to his legs. And aside from that, he also has multiple fractures to his vertebrae, lower back, and ribs. Now what's concerning me is that there was massive trauma to his head. And there was a lead pipe that they found at the scene. So, and this may have been what they used to, to hit him with. And, you know, like I said, he was unconscious. There was a lot of blood. Oh, man. And, you know, he's going to be in surgery for quite a while. I mean, not my son. I mean, doctor, you, you've got to do what you can. I mean, he's just a little boy. I mean, he's my son. You've got to do something to help him. But I want to rest assure you, he's in good hands, OK? The surgeons are going to do the best that they can. He's in good hands. As soon as I get more information, I'll let you know. Let both of you know. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. God, why would somebody do this to him? I mean, he's a good kid. He doesn't have any enemies. It just doesn't make sense. I know. I wish I had all the right words to say to make everything better. Christine, we just we just need to pray. We just need to pray like we've never prayed before. Lord, we can sit here all night and we can ask why, but that would do us no good. Everything that happens is part of your plan, and, and we know that. Please, Lord, put a hedge of protection around Ray, watch over him, heal him and bring him back to us so that he can continue to be a witness for you. He is your servant, and we know that you can protect him and that you will hold him by your side until you see fit for him to come back to us. We beg for your mercy on us and on Ray. We beg for your compassionate hand to fall on him and to heal him. We ask this of you, Lord. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Doctor? Oh, hey, it's me. Oh, Rick, what are you what are you doing here? What How, how's he doing that? I don't know anything. He's been in surgery all night. I mean the doctor's been down a couple of times, but they don't tell you anything. I mean I don't know anything, Rick. It's driving me crazy. Look, we need to talk. <laughs> Alright. What's going on? Just here. Have some coffee. Let's get out of here away from these. So, what's going on, Rick? Well, look, Mike, I don't know quite how to tell you this. Um, 
In fact, I debated all morning whether or not I should come down here and say anything, but ultimately I figured it was the right thing to do. Uh, I know what happened last night. I know what, what happened. What? What do you mean? I, uh, uh, Ray was the last one out of the locker room, and he was in the parking lot by himself, and uh, he never even saw it coming. They, uh, they caught him completely by surprise. What? He, uh, he was hit by a car. It was, uh, you know, they must have really laid into him uh, because he never saw it coming and he couldn't get up and defend himself. Well, who's they? they? Uh, they got out of the car, they beat him, kicked him, hit him with a lead pipe. I don't think they meant to kill him, Mike. I, th I think they just... Wait a minute, Rick. How do you, how do you know all this? How, how do you know? Luke told me about it. He was in the car with those boys that beat up Ray. He didn't, he wasn't part of the plan. He didn't even know they were going to beat him. They, he thought that he was going to scare him. Who, who's said, they? Those kids that you reported for beating up Luke, they... He, he said they, he told them that Ray must have been the one that reported them to the cops, so they went after Ray. Those kids did that to my son? Why didn't Lucas press charges against them when they did it well, to Luke, him? Luke they, wasn't... Okay, it wasn't them that beat up Luke. I did. I was the one. I hit Luke. I didn't even know that he had told you about that. But, uh... I was drunk and angry and out of control. And it was before you came and helped me, so I just, I didn't, you were right about everything. I didn't know my own son. I didn't know who he was hanging out with. So, well, look where my son is now, Rick. Look where he's at. I know, you were right. And if it means anything, Luke went to the police and reported everything, and they will be going to jail this time. You were right. You were right about everything. Hey, I've, I've got to go check on my son, Rick. I can't believe he still has this thing. I gave this to him when he came home from the hospital. I thought it had been long gone by now. I, I bet he's been hiding it all these years. I'm just getting some things together for the hospital. The doctor said that to bring some things over to comfort him for when he wakes up. Can I talk to you about something? Sure. That was the cops on the phone, and they're going to prosecute those guys as adults. With Lucas' statement and, and the testimony, they're going to be locked away for a long time. <sighs> Poor Lucas. I mean, in a way, I kind of blame myself for the way he turned out. I mean, he was kind of like a son to me. I mean, you know, ever since his mom and sister died, I, I wanted to be there for him, but I knew that he needed to be with his father. And, but if I knew what was going on with Rick, you know, maybe I could have done something more. Maybe extend a hand more. You couldn't have known that, Michael. <laughs> it wasn't your responsibility, you know, his actions. It's, if anything, I mean, maybe Lucas can learn something from this and he can go away and turn his life around for the better. Yeah, but why, why does this have to happen? I mean, we were doing so well. I mean, you know, he was just getting over his mom leaving. I mean, he got a scholarship to BC College. I mean, he was supposed to get out and live his life. I mean, why? Why him? Everything he is is because of you. You made him the kid that everybody loves. You made him the kid that's smart enough and dedicated enough to get that scholarship. It's because of you that he has the confidence and the love that he needs to allow him to get over his mother leaving. That's you. That was because of you and God. Just remember that. God lets everything happen for a reason, Michael. Christine. I love you. I love you too, Michael.
ago New Year's Eve Lying there on his back Looking down I saw me And life moves way too fast When you're only 18 Never worry about the That is going to do it for our game of the week, WCHP TV. And I tell you what, East Ridge has now lost eight straight games. They continue to struggle without their star, Ray Campbell. He is still recovering after that terrible assault, still in the hospital. We hope he gets better soon because they can definitely use him. For WCHP, I'm Doug Cuffin. Mr. Campbell, thank you for coming today. I know this has been very rough for you. Well, Dr. Gaither, I, I, I really appreciate everything that you've done for Ray and everyone else. Mr. Campbell. Oh, please call me Michael. 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 You know, I've been up front with you from the beginning, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. Ray's condition has deteriorated, and uh, you know, his brain waves have decreased considerably uh, as the days goes on. And, um, you know, he's not coming back. Why are you telling me this? Mike, he had, he's brain dead. I mean, his organs are terrific. I mean, the rest of his organs are, are okay. I know he can touch a lot of people's lives, you know. If, if you're willing to sign a waiver for us to do donate organ donations. So there's no chance he can come out of this at all? Michael, it's going to take a miracle. Well, Dr. Gaither, do you believe in miracles? I beg your pardon? Do you believe in miracles? I, I haven't really thought of it. I mean, uh, I've been in practice for quite a long while, and I must say I have seen some cases where I couldn't explain things. I couldn't explain why things happen. You know, I believe in miracles. I believe, I really do. I believe that what is happening to Ray is going to help other people in their miracles. You know, other people that have given up hope and looking for a liver or, or a heart transplant of some sort. You know, maybe maybe that this will give them their miracle and, and they will survive. You know, and then maybe they'll be able to find a cure for cancer or maybe world hunger. I don't know. I mean, this this world needs things like that. So, you know, things like this doesn't happen to anybody else. I mean, and, and I know my Ray, he would want to help as many people as he could. And, you know, if, if dying is going to help other people in their miracles, then, then that's what we have to do. And I'll sign the waiver. God bless you, Ray. God bless you.
Well, as good as can be expected, considering, well, can we talk outside for a minute? Yeah, yeah. All right. First, Christine, I just want to thank you for being here through all of this. I don't know what I would have done without you here. Michael, I love you, and this is breaking my heart. Christine, I, I've done a lot of thinking about this, and, and I know it's the right thing to do. Um, I knew what Dr. Gaither was going to tell me before he asked to see me. I knew what was going to happen. Last night when I was praying, I heard Ray's voice in my prayer. I mean, it was so clear. It was like he was there. I mean, I even had to look around just to see if he was. And amazingly enough, he was there. I mean, Christine, I really wish you would have known him better. I mean, really knew him. He's such an amazing kid. So strong, so confident. I mean, he was my world. He had so many friends. You know, after Rachel left, I, I didn't know how it was going to go on. You know, but God saw me through it. He saw me through it all. You know, he, he made me realize how important Ray was to me. You know, after she left, I knew I had to be more than just his, his father. I had to be his friend. I had to be his mother. I had to be a spiritual guy. You know, a father shouldn't have to bury his son. But, you know, in a big way, I envy him because he gets to go home. That's what he told me, Christine. He told me to stop holding on so tight and just let him go. You know, he was just standing there smiling at me, so happy. Christine, he was so happy. You know, and I mean, he looked so amazing, so incredible. I mean, he looked like, he looked like the son that I had when he was born. The God had given me, not like that poor, beat up child that's in the bed right now. I mean, he looks so amazing. You know, and he, he looked at me, he knelt down, he looked at me, and he smiled and he said, Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for showing me God. And he knelt down next to me even bigger smile this time. And he asked me to let him go. And I looked at him and, and I told him I'd, I would promise, I'd promise to let him go. And so I did. I let him go. He gets to go home, Christine. And as much as I don't want to do this, I know it's the right thing to do. You know, but I know God's gonna help me do this. He's going to help me get out of bed every day. God's going to help me through my life. I know He will. And I know that Ray's going to be standing there next to Him, smiling down at me. And I know that when my time is up down here, I'll get to see Him again. And I will get to tell Him that how proud I am of Him. And that's going to be a great day. It'd be a great day. Oh, here comes the doctor. I guess it's time. Mr. Campbell, we're gonna get things started now, okay? Mike, uh, Lucas didn't want to be here until today. He uh, couldn't bring himself to be here until today. I, I mean, I want you to know I didn't force him to come here. It's his decision. Uh, Lucas, I, I, I appreciate you coming. And, um, I, I mean, I just, 
I'm glad you're here because it just shows what kind of man that you're becoming. And, uh, and I, there's something that I want to say to you. Uh, Lucas, I forgive you. And, and not only that, God forgives you too. Okay? And, I mean, you, you need to find it in yourself to forgive yourself as well. I don't think I can, sir. I can't forget him. I can't forget what I was a part of. Lucas, you don't have to forget. You and Ray were best friends. And you had so many great memories together. Memories that will live on for a long time. And But now, there's just one thing, one thing else that you need to do. You need to say goodbye. You need to say goodbye to Ray. I don't think I can, sir. You can, buddy. I believe in you. When your mom and sister died, I didn't want to say goodbye because I thought that would make it real and I didn't want it to be real. I made so many mistakes. I turned away from everything and everybody that was important to me, family and friends and the church. And most of all, I turned away from you, buddy. And I'm sorry. But I promise you, I'm never going to leave you alone like that again. But you have to do this. Luke, you have to say goodbye because you'll regret it for the rest of your life if you don't. I know you can do it, pal. I love you. friend. And for a long time, you're my only friend. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, Ray. None of it. I, I love you, man. You're my brother. Not just my best friend, but my brother. And I know, I know where you're going, Ray. I know you're going to heaven. I want to go there too, Ray. I want to go where you're going. I want what you had in your heart. That's what I want. You tried so hard over the years to give it to me. I just didn't listen. I'm listening now. I'm listening now. And I know what I want. I want Jesus. I want the peace that you've always had. I want to know that you forgive me for all of this. I want you to know how sorry I am for everything. And I would give anything for it to be me in this bed. I know I can't change any of that, Ray. I know. But I also know that I'm never going to let your memory die. The things that you stood for the man that you are. I'm going to make sure that people see those things in me until the day I die. I, I will see you again, Ray. I'm going to go where you're going. Whatever it takes to get there, I'll do it. Just show me what to do. We can do it right now if you want to. We can do it right now. Yeah, sir. I do. All you have to do is pray, Lucas. Just pray. Just pray with me. Just say with me, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you into my heart. Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Please come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord Savior. I believe you, Jesus. I believe in you that you suffered and died on the cross for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you suffered and died on the cross for me. I ask you for your love and compassion. I ask you for your forgiveness, and I ask you to live inside me and use me as your vessel so that others may see your love in me. I ask you for your love and compassion. 
I ask you for your forgiveness, and I ask you to live inside of me and use me as your vessel so that others may see your love in me. With all this, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He hung on long enough, Lucas, to see you be saved. And I know he saw it, and I know he heard it. It was just enough for him to let go. I just want to breathe again. I just want to see the end. Tired of all this letting go. Give me something I can hold. I just want to breathe again. I just want to see the end. Tired of all this letting go. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out this morning. It's a real testimony uh, to the amount of people that Ray had touched and affected in his short life. Ray was my son, my family, my best friend. But now he's gone. He will always be my son, my family, and my best friend. You know, and we ask ourselves, how do we go on with our lives? And, and the answer is simple. I mean, we just have to keep breathing. We just have to keep breathing and knowing that our lives have to go on. And the example that he set the way he made us laugh, you know, the way that he touched every one of our lives, each one of us differently. I mean, those things will live forever. And each one of us are better for having Ray affect and touch our lives. I love you, son. I love you very much. say we might get snow tonight. Might be the last one, which is fine with me. I'm ready for spring. Work's picking up a little bit, I'm putting in a lot of hours, which I don't mind because, uh, you know, I like to stay busy. <laughs> House has been pretty empty and quiet. I, I don't know. It just hasn't been the same the past four months. But, I mean, you already know that. <laughs> and the team's not doing so well either. They lost the first round of the finals. But I guess they couldn't bounce back, you know, after, well, you know, what happened. But Lucas and Rick are doing a lot better. They're not out of the woods yet, but they're making progress. Uh, as a matter of fact, they just got to baptize last weekend. And they joined the church. So Lucas is even talking about college. It would be a community college, of course, to stay in town. But, I mean, it's a start. God, you really made a difference in their lives. Listen, Ray, I, there's something that I want to tell you. I was with Christine the other night and, well, I asked her to marry me. And she said yes. She said yes. And, Ray, I don't want you to think that I asked her because I'm lonely and you're not around anymore. It's not that at all. Um, 
I mean, I remember what you said, and it, and it got me thinking. And, you know, I will never forget your mother. I never will. But I love Christine. I mean, what she went through with me, she is amazing. And I love her. And, God, Ray, I, I miss you, Ray. And I love you so much. And I miss you every day. And I don't want you to worry about me. I, I'll be okay. You know, I know you're happy where you're at. And I cannot wait to see you. I cannot wait. I mean, don't worry about me, Ray. I'll be fine. I, my life has to go on. I love you. And I'll see you soon. with my pride The part of me surviving is starting to die Where will I go If I leave Would you send a search party for me If I stay 